An Army veteran wants to move to Indiana once his military contract is over. The problem is one member of his family isn't welcome. Wayne Tibbet has an emotional service animal named Zorro, but Zorro is a pit bull and the communities Tibbet wants to move to prohibit owning that breed of dog. As Barbara Harrington reports, the family's fight to come home is dividing the community. Well, this is my oldest daughter, Tara, her husband, Wayne. Elaine Stone is counting down the days until her daughter's family comes home to the Hoosier State. I haven't been around my daughter for over four years and because they've been stationed in New York and Texas and and I just can't wait for my whole family to be together again. Her son-in-law, Wayne Tibbet, is stationed in New York and his military contract ends in May. That's when he plans to move his family back to Benton County, to the small town of Fowler or Oxford. But both communities have ordinances that prohibit owning vicious dogs, specifically pit bulls. That's a problem for Tibbet because he has post-traumatic stress disorder and his pit bull Zorro has become much more than a man's best friend. When Wayne gets upset or nervous or anxious, like he goes in big crowds or a lot of people or a lot of confusion, his anxiety kicks up. And, you know, he'll go home and, and just be with the dog, and the dog helps him out so much. Zorro is considered an emotional support animal, which is different from a service animal. A trained service animal recognizes that and then responds and, you know, serves to, um, you know, stop the individual from repetitive, repetitive or harmful, you know, behaviors or gets them away from that particular environment um, by nuzzling the, the individual or, you know, whatever the animal has been trained to do. Whereas an emotional support animal, um, it, it is the actual presence of the animal that provides some type of benefit for the person with a disability. That distinction is important because while emotional support animals aren't protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act, they are under the Fair Housing Act. A city or town may need to modify a housing ordinance um, that limits you know, the breed of, of dogs that can reside in that town or that people can have in the town under the Fair Housing Act. Um, and what gets confusing is that the town would only be required to modify it as it relates to allowing the individual to have the animal in their home. The town wouldn't have to allow the individual to then take the animal out into public. Several of Indiana's largest cities have moved away from breed-specific legislation. That includes Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and Bloomington. The city of South Bend just changed its ordinance last year, shifting the language from being breed specific to behavior specific. Any dog can be aggressive if, if it's unaltered, um, if it's uh, untrained, un under socialized, uh, unsupervised. And so really good law should be written, good animal care and control law should be written to address those issues. South Bend Councilwoman Valerie Shea ran on a platform to update the city's antiquated animal control laws. She says since the new ordinance went into effect, there haven't been any major issues. And the animal shelter's euthanasia rate dropped 16% over the past two years. A lot of these wonderful dogs that happen to be pit bull mixes are now getting a chance uh, to be a loving family companion. And that's what means the most to me. Back in Oxford, Elaine Stone is waiting on paperwork from her son-in-law's doctor so she can go before the town council and ask them to allow Zorro in town. She just wants her family to come home, pit bull and all. They are my love and they are my life. And I want them home more than anything. And for these towns to deny them to come back because of this sweet dog who's protected is just makes me sick.